Mm, so thank you everybody for attending the talk today. So I will, we're going to present our work about rewiring what to watch recommendation next, what to watch next recommendation to reduce radicalization pathways. It's a joint work with Yanao, Francesco, Carlos, and Michael. And so basically what I'm going to talk today is about algorithmic bias in a ranking system. So as you may know, our ranking algorithms are a core functionality in online social platforms and are constantly affected by the natural interaction generated by the users. These algorithmic bias that we can explore, like we can, uh, so we can, we, can, we can see and characterize the ranking algorithms, it can exacerbate inequalities in exposure of the output. And what we see today is that we can actually represent as networks, the both networks of users or networks of contents, interaction happening on the rank ranking platforms. This may help to characterize and mitigate those biases. And in this work, we show our representing sequences of recommendations in a graph of items in order to characterize and mitigate bias coming from radicalization in the, in the data. So in particular, we focus on what to watch next uh, features, which are popular features in recommender systems, in particular, in video sharing platforms, they are implemented for increasing user engagement, the content use, and driving advertising and monetizations. Recent studies have emphasized how the role of radicalizations, how the role of polarized views inside, inside those platforms can drive users towards undesired and radicalized content, even if they're not supposed to be uh, radicalized themselves. In particular, the, rec the recommender system may steer those users towards those content, eventually building radicalization pathways. So as an example, you can see here, you, you can imagine as a radicalized video can, uh, can let the user jumping from one, one recommendation to the other, keeping the user radicalized in the view. In, in this way, the user can, it can be led to a sort of rabbit hole when all the videos are, that are recommended at some point are radicalized, or most of them. In this, in this work, we want to find, we want to propose a graph-based approach to mitigate the radicalization pathways suggested by the recommender. In, so in just briefly explaining the problem formulation, let's consider a set V of N videos, which we can assume that for each video we can associate a score, which is the relevance uh, with a score UV, where, where, where particular the score associates a relevance with the video V, assuming that the user have watched the video U. So in particular, assuming that, as you know, like recommended systems can generate a subset of recommendations, a subset V of recommendations, will not recommend all those scores in this matrix, but just a subset of them based on the score SUV. And the list will be recommended after the user will watch the video U. You can, also you can also assume that there is a probabilistic interpretation on this subset of score, which is based on the ranking of the item in, of the position of the item in the ranking. In this, in this way, we generate a direct probabilistic graph. So assuming we can generate recommendations for all the possible videos that the user may watch, we can actually generate a, 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 a probabilistic graph, which represents the possible pathways that the user may be jumping on. So the, we can assume that the user may jump from one video to the other because of the recommendation generated by the recommender algorithms. So in our assumption, what we do next is partition the graph, assuming that some of those videos are radicalized, so we can actually label them. And we can assume that there are, those videos are considered as harmful or radicalized. We will stick to this definition harmful, which is pretty general, because we will show that there are like different applications where this algorithm and this methodology can be applied. So, and the rest, of course, will be considered as, as neutral. So as in, in this particular study, we're interested, we're focused on the pathways generated by only the harmful nodes. So we want to understand how the user can be kept stuck in those radicalization pathways. In particular, we can actually quantify a score, which we we'll call a segregation score, which are the number of steps in expectation that a radicalized no, a radicalized video, uh, starting from a radicalized video, the user will need for jumping to a neutral one. So those steps quantifying as also easy to interpret the number of steps the user uh, will, 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 uh, will be passing through the graph before going to watch another neutral neutral video. 
in this way, we, we want to be sure that we want to reduce this problem. And how do we do that? We want, to we want to minimize the maximum of the segregation value of all the harmful videos. So assuming that we can, uh, we can measure the segregation of each video, you want to reduce this maximum. How do we do that? We apply a simple edge rewiring operation. So what is edge rewiring? It's based on two different operations, which is removing an existing edge and creating a new one, but keeping the same source. So what we actually do, we remove, the, we change the destination node of the existing recommendation. In this case, as you can see, the example of the videos U, V, and W, UV is the existing recommendation, which is from a radicalized video to another one, still radicalized. And what we want to do, we want to rewire this recommendation, generating a new edge in the graph coming from the video U to the video W. Of course, in the moment that we generate this rewiring of when we apply the rewiring on the recommendations already generated, we can assume there is a trade-off, there, there is a loss in accuracy because the recommendation generated before were the best possible ones. So we can actually quantify this loss, starting from the fact that we know the initial recommendation generated, and we can use the NDCG for quantifying the loss that we generate before and after we, uh, the, um, the rewiring. So to quantify what the problem I presented, so to, to summarize, we can assume that having this direct probabilistic graph, given some recommendation generated for all the possible videos, we can actually try to rewire a subset of recommendations K. So we have to find K rewirings given some input constraint on the quality. So um, input constraint tau in order to find uh, uh, rewiring, which may lead to a loss, which it will be less than the input constraint tau imposed as a constraint. So absorbing random work in this context may actually be helpful and to, to propose our solution. Why? Because absorbing random work at this particular structure, when we can assume that some the videos that we consider as harmful are the only transient one in the graph. And we can actually define as absorbing the, ne the neutral ones. Absorbing means that when the user jumps into a, a, a neutral video, into an absorbing uh, node in the graph, is stuck there, I cannot move away from it. So that means that we want to find a way to quantify and interpret the segregation, focusing only on the transient node, which are the unfold. So in this way, we, what we do, we just focus on the sub, sub matrix MHH, which is harmful, harmful. And then we can define using the fundamental matrix, a, um, a nice property from the absorbing random walk, which we can actually, as a, as a really useful matrix that quantify for each entry, the expected not a total number of times that the user walk, the, the, the user random walk visit a node V starting from the node U. So we can actually quantify the number, the, 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 the steps needed from reaching from node U to V. We actually focus on the vector, uh, on the vector representation of this F. So we aggregate over, over the, the columns the, this information, and we can actually have the segregation score we were looking for before. In this way, why we do that? Because we can actually propose an incremental solution, an incremental, uh, an incremental solution for the rewiring operation. In this way, the delta H O represents. The, the, um, the difference be, be before and after applying the rewiring on the segregation value. So this means that we can actually point towards the maximum, possible maximum um, degrees of the initial segregation of the vector. So the one rewiring algorithm leads to the optimal value in to the optimal, uh, the optimal candidate of rewiring for generating the, our reducing segregation. This algorithm is pretty simple. So we have a candidate generation where we find a set of possible rewiring operation given the input constraint on the quality. And then we actually look for the optimal rewiring search looking at this delta. And so in this way, we can, uh, we can find an algorithm in polynomial time that has reduced optimality the one rewiring operation, the one rewiring uh, problem. Now for the KD wiring, so the initial problem that we introduced this is a little bit harder because this problem is NPR to approximate within any factor. So this means that we cannot find a, 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 an algorithm which an approximation will be a good solution for that problem. In this way, what we do, we starting from the inf useful information grasped from the one rewiring algorithm, 
we can actually apply the same algorithm in an heuristic. So k times we can reuse the, alg the optimal algorithm to generate each time the possible optimal uh, rewiring operation, and then updating the information, the initial information of the matrix and the fundamental of the probabilistic graph and the fundamental matrix. So each time what we do, we run the algorithm one proposed before, and we run it k times. And each time we find the optimal rewiring, we apply the optimal rewiring, and then we update information. So we update the graph, we update the probabilistic matrix and the fundamental matrix. In this way, we can actually find a good heuristic to solve the k rewiring problem. For the experimental setup, which, as, you, as I mentioned before, this measure can be applied to different scenarios and it's, it's pretty flexible. And we specifically, we don't apply only to the popular uh, problem of radicalization in YouTube, but also for a news recommender scenario. When we want, we assume we have a label of controversial, uh, sorry, of uh, reliable versus unreliable contents on the news recommenders. And we want to be sure that those unreliable contents are not, are, are not leading to a rabbit hole. We compare our algorithm to actually the state of the art and closest algorithm to us, which is the Repablink, we, as a recent competitor, a competitor proposed recently, which the task is edge addition for reducing polarized bubbles in the graph. And actually, we propose also our algorithm for, with a bunch of baselines. As you may see from the data, we stress that we want to stress the idea that we show the, the efficiency of our algorithm with different size of the data set, but also different size of the recommendation output, so different size of D. So which are our results? So it's, it's pretty, um, we can actually see that from those results, we have actually, after few rewiring operation, we can reduce up to 60% of the initial graph generation. So we can see the star, which is actually our algorithm proposal, that after few rewiring operation can lead to up to 60% of the, 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 the decrease in segre initial segregation with this Z, Z0. So in this case, in the Y axis, we have the, we track the new value given by the rewiring, the wiring after T operation over the initial Z0 um, segregation value. So for each new segregation value, we track the new one on the Y axis and on the K, is the now is the, is the we are tracking the number of our rewirings we are applying. So as you can see, after few numbers of rewirings, we have a huge decrease in segregation. Results uh, are consistent also among different size of data set and recommendation output length. So you can see D5, 10, and 20 are actually the different size of recommendation output, and B and S may, means to be big and small data set. So we are consistent. It's also possible to see that Repablink is difficult to uh, be run over a big data set. So that's why you will not find the Repablink on the big ones, but only on the small ones. Also, the, something that we don't show here is that mm, the, the, it's, it's not possible to show, but we actually evaluated is the fact that the graph topology doesn't influence our performances because the YouTube data set is, is driven by a power law distribution over the, 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 over the recommendation output. Of the um, of the model, while uh, the the news recommender looks like a regular graph. So both cases, our algorithm is not affected by the, the distribute the let's say the different graph topology. Specifically, we actually want to be sure that depending on the input constraint, we don't expect any weird behavior by our algorithm. So that's why we run the the same algorithm, the same heuristic proposed with different values of tau, and you can see. That the results are consistent. That of course, as expected, increasing tau, so increasing the strength of the input constraint, we reduce the subset of possible candidates, which lead to let's say a slightly decrease uh, of our uh, effectiveness. But that's kind of natural because we reduce the subset of possible potential rewiring. At the end, we actually wanted to be sure that the rewiring operation was consistent not only with the reducing the maximum, but also reducing the total segregation expected over the vectors. And as you can see here in, in those plots, comparing our heuristic against the public, we see that even if you are not meant to reduce the total segregation in the, segrega in the, seg in the Z vector, we are actually, in in, in through our algorithm, we are actually reducing the whole segregation of the whole harmful nodes, not only the maximum. 
which is pretty useful because in this way we are actually not in a sort of indirect way reducing the word segregation of the word subset of nodes. So what's next? Starting this study was the first one to start to uh, import, to shed the light on algorithms able to reduce this new phenomenon called radicalizations on on platform on video sharing platforms. But this is this is just the first step. First of all, we assume that there are binary labels, which is kind of a strong assumption. We extend we want we plan to extend this framework to non-binary ones. So assuming that we can have a, a, a score over the radicalization. We actually want to be sure that this, it's, as you, as I said, like this graph uh, is given as an input. So the hour is our post-processing technique. So we want to, I want to be sure that it's clear that we can actually extend this framework in a dynamic fashion, an online fashion. And also that this measure is pretty flexible. So we can actually aggregate it with other well-known phenomena driven by algorithmic bias like for example popularity bias or unfairness so this measure can be combined to other well-known phenomenon to study let's say a mixed a mixture of two or more uh, uh, human biases in the data last the last is like this is a, of course a post-processing technique so of course the next step will be naturally to have the segregation aware in process algorithm so the natural step is not generating an initial output and modifying the output of the recommender, but rather starting to think about a loss function that may actually include in the, in the, recommend, in the generation of the recommendation, also segregation measures. And, and thank you, thank you for the attention and I hope I stick to the time. Thank you very much. I think we're still on time and we have time for one or two questions. Sure. All right, then if everyone is thinking, oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a question. Hello, uh, very nice talk, by the way. And uh, so the question was on uh, the relevant scores. So you assume that you have the relevant scores for all these videos or the other items. So uh, in, in uh, real world settings, uh, you might not be able to get these relevant scores and uh, there are also algorithms like um, banded algorithms which use exploration for this kind of uh, uh, purposes. Did you compare your algorithm with such exploration based uh, algorithms? And thank you, thank you for the question. Is actually so our assumption is that we can, we don't have any, that, that's a good question actually, because we assume that there is no initial import level of importance of the videos of you, right? So each video is equally important to start watching it. And of course, it would be nice to having a, a, a relevant, like a probability score over those. In general, I will say that is SUV is an, as a score that you can actually generate having uh, in mind that, that you can actually have a recommender, like, right? So you can access the recommender and generating those subsets of recommendations yourself. So the problem there, if, if actually those recommendations are given and, and I don't have the complete list of, of scores, that probably will be a challenge and will be a sort of black box approach. So I, I, I don't know if it's like, how does it change the problem? But it's pretty interesting, let's say, is a, is because in this case, you actually have access to all the scores generated by the recommender, but that would be an interesting question to ask, like what happens if we don't know, we don't we don't have that information. Of course, the rewiring there should be talked, should be designed in a way that we we can assume other measures. So like we don't not only the relevance, but probably the fairness, the popularity bias, or having information over the data rather than the algorithms. 